Dennis Johnson. He was a three-time champion, a finals MVP, five-time All-Star, two-time All-NBA, and made nine All-Defense teams. DJ was drafted by the Seattle Supersonics in 1976, and as their point guard, he led them to the 1978 and 79 finals. The Sonics lost in seven games to the Washington Bullets in 78, but in game three, Dennis blocked seven shots, which is the official record for most blocks by a guard in a finals game. He got his revenge next year though, when he won finals MVP after beating the Bullets in five games. Dennis then spent three years with the Suns, making first-team All-NBA in 1981 and averaging a career-high 19.5 points per game in 82. In 84, Dennis joined the Celtics, which is where he won two more championships in 84 and 86. Along with being one of the best defensive guards of all time, he was also a great dunker and had a reputation for coming through in the clutch situations, such as his game-winning shot in Game 4 of the 1985 Finals. He was also the player to hit the first ever three-point game winner in the NBA playoffs. Sean Marion Marion played from 1999 to 2015, spending his best years on the Phoenix Suns and Dallas Mavericks. He was a four-time All-Star and made the All-NBA third team twice. He was a versatile defender who unfortunately never made an All-Defense team. He could guard all five positions, and from 2003 to 2007, he became the only player to block at least 100 shots and have 150 steals in four straight seasons. Only three players have averaged two steals and two blocks in a single season, but Marion came very close to achieving that in 2006. Speaking of 2006, with Amari Stoudemire playing only three games due to surgery, Marion stepped up with 21.8 points, 11.8 rebounds, two steals, and 1.7 blocks on a career-high 52.5% from the field. He led the Suns in points, rebounds, steals, blocks, PER, win shares, win shares per 48, net rating, and finished 10th in MVP voting and 7th in Defensive Player of the Year voting. Marion joined Dallas in 2009, and thanks to his big contributions in the finals, they were able to win the 2011 championship. Sam Jones he was a 10-time champion, a 5-time All-Star, made the All-NBA second team three times, and led the Celtics in scoring for 1963, 65, 66, and 67. His best season was in 1965, when he averaged 25.9 points in the regular season and 28.6 points in the playoffs. If the Finals MVP had existed at that time, he had a strong chance of winning it in the Finals, as he led Boston in scoring with 27.8 points. He also had a chance to win Finals. MVP in 1963 when he led Boston with 24.7 points and 1964 when he led with 21.2 points on 55.6% shooting. That's great efficiency by today's standards, but for a perimeter guard in the 60s, that's incredible. One of Jerry West's nicknames is Mr. Clutch, but what you may not know is that Sam Jones was also given the nickname Mr. Clutch since he had a reputation for wanting the ball whenever pressure was high. His most famous clutch moment was probably in Game 7 of the 1962 East Finals, when he made a shot over Wilt Chamberlain with two seconds left on the clock. Mitch Richmond He was one of the best three-point shooters of the 90s, and is most famous for playing with the Run TMC Warriors and Sacramento Kings. He made six straight All-Star games, was the 1995 All-Star Game MVP, made five All-NBA teams, was the 1989 Rookie of the Year, and won a championship with the Lakers in 2002. He had 10 straight seasons averaging 20 points or more, and he got as high as 25.9 in 97. Alongside Tim Hardaway and Chris Mullen, Richmond made the Warriors one of the most exciting teams to watch, as they sold out every home game in the 1990-91 season. Run TMC finished that season as the highest scoring trio of the year. Mitch finished with a career 3-point percentage of 38.8%. In 1996, he shot 43.7% on 6.4 attempts per game. To put how good that is into perspective, James Harden took 6.6 3-point shots per game in 2014 and had a 3-point percentage of 36.6%. Alvin Robertson the 6'4 shooting guard played in the NBA from 1984 to 1996, and his best years were with the San Antonio Spurs and Milwaukee Bucks. 
Robertson made four All-Star games, six All-Defense teams, was the 1986 Most Improved Player, and the 1986 Defensive Player of the Year. He led the league in steals in 1987 with 3.2, 1991 with 3, and holds the NBA record for most steals in a season when he stole the ball 301 times in 1986. Robertson also holds the best career steals per game average in NBA history with 2.7. He's definitely one of the greatest underrated defenders of all time, but he was also pretty solid offensively, putting up a career best 19.6 points and 6.8 assists in 1988. Only four players in NBA history have officially achieved the prestigious quadruple double achievement, and Robertson was able to pull it off on February 18, 1986, when he dropped 20 points, 11 rebounds, 10 assists, and 10 steals. Paul Arizon he played for the Philadelphia Warriors from 1950 to 52 and then 1954 to 62. Arizon was a 10 time All Star, the 1952 All Star Game MVP, a 4 time All NBA selection, and won the 1956 NBA Championship. Pitchin Paul was one of the pioneers of the jump shot in the NBA during the 50s, and with it, he grabbed two scoring titles when he put up 25.4 points in 1952 and 26.4 in 57. Despite being 6 foot 4, he was also a great rebounder, grabbing as many as 11.3 per game in 1952. His game high in points happened on February 17, 1961, in a loss to the Boston Celtics. His teammate Wilt Chamberlain put up 27, while Arizon had 49. If the Finals MVP had existed back in the day, he most likely would have won the award in 56, when he led his Warriors to defeat the Fort Wayne Pistons with 27.6 points, 8 rebounds, and 2.8 assists. Mark Aguirre the 1980s Dallas Mavericks are one of the most underrated teams in NBA history, and their 6'6 small forward was the best player on the squad. Aguirre was drafted first overall in 1981, was a three-time All-Star, and a two-time champion. He had seven straight seasons where he averaged 20 points or more, and his personal best year was 1984, when he put up 29.5 points on 52.4% shooting. He had a great mid-range game, and was a solid three-point shooter. Despite being 6'6", Aguirre was also very good in the low post against bigger players. In 1988, the Dallas Mavericks met the Los Angeles Lakers in the West Finals. Led by Aguirre, the Mavs were able to push the series to seven games, making them the only team in the West to push the 80s Lakers to a seventh game in a playoff series. Midway through the 1989 season, Aguirre was traded to the Detroit Pistons, which is where he won back-to-back -back championships in 89 and 90. Gail Goodrich The Lakers are a franchise loaded with underrated players, and Goodrich has an argument for being the most underrated of the bunch. Gail, who was given the nickname Stumpy by Elgin Baylor, was drafted by the Lakers in 1965. He received limited minutes as a backup guard, but he did show promise with two 30-point games in 1967 and averaging 13.8 points in 1968. Goodrich was taken by the Phoenix Suns in the 1968 expansion draft and was able to show some real talent as a starter. In 1969, he put up 23.8 points and a career-high 5.4 rebounds. In 1970, he put up 20 20 points and a career-high 7.5 assists per game. In the 1970 offseason, Goodrich was traded back to the Lakers, and as a starter, he was able to add a youthful energy to the aging Lakers core. The 1972 Lakers are considered one of the greatest teams in NBA history, but some don't know that Goodrich actually led them in scoring with 25.9 points per game. He led them in scoring again for the 1972 Finals with 25.6 points, and in the 1973 Finals with 21 points. 8 points, Goodrich finished his career as a five-time All-Star, a first-team All-NBA selection in 1974, and a Hall of Fame inductee. Fat Lever most fans may have heard about Alex English and how he scored the most points of any player in the 80s, but less talked about is his co-star, Lafayette Lever. He was drafted by the Trailblazers in 1982, but his prime years were on the Nuggets. Fat made two All-Star games, the All-NBA second team in 1987 and second team All-Defense in 1988. As of this video, he's number 11 on the all-time list for triple doubles, with 43. Lever led the Nuggets in rebounding for 1987, 88, 89, 
69 and 90, and what's even more impressive is that he was only a 6 foot 3 point guard. Lever was one of the greatest pickpockets of the 80s too, as he led the Nuggets in steals for 6 straight seasons. In 1985, he set an NBA record when he had 8 steals in a single quarter against the Indiana Pacers. John Havlicek In my humble opinion, John Havlicek is the most underrated player in NBA history. According to the great Bill Russell, he described Havlicek as the best all-around ball player I ever saw. John Hondo Havlicek played for the Boston Celtics from 1962 to 1978. He was a 6 foot 5 shooting guard slash small forward who could handle the ball, rebound, distribute, and defend extremely well. This led to him getting 31 career triple doubles. Havlicek pioneered the sixth man role in the NBA, as Coach Red Auerbach had him come off the bench in his early years to torch the other team's substitutes before he was promoted to a full-time starter. Along with his teammate Satch Sanders, Havlicek has the greatest undefeated finals record in NBA history, winning 8 championships and suffering 0 losses. He made 13 straight All-Star games, 11 All-NBA teams, and was the 1974 Finals MVP. When people talk about the best two-way players, they usually bring up guys like Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, or Kevin Garnett. But I strongly believe John Havlicek should be in that conversation as well. He is the Celtics' all-time leading scorer, with 26,395 points, averaging 20.8 points per game over the course of his career. He led his Boston teams in scoring seven times, and his career high was 54 points, which he did in the 1973 playoffs against the Atlanta Hawks. That makes him one of only nine players to have 54 or more points in a playoff game. Havlicek also made eight all-defense teams, but those honors did not exist until the 1969 season, if they were available for his entire career, there's a very real possibility he could have been named to at least 10 all-defense teams, which would make him and Kobe Bryant the only guards in NBA history to accomplish that. He's one of the most famous pickpockets in league history, and he arguably made the greatest steal in the NBA playoffs. Unfortunately, steals weren't tracked until the 1974 season, but considering how he had a 110 steal season at 35 years old, I believe he could have racked up a few 200 steal seasons in his younger years. Havlicek also has more career defensive win shares than great perimeter defenders like Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, Kobe Bryant, and Michael Cooper, just to name a few. He never won a regular season MVP, but he had one of the best non-MVP seasons in 1971 when he put up a career best 28.9 points, a career best 9 rebounds, and a career best 7.5 assists. Havlicek won the 1974 finals MVP, but if the award was available for his entire career, he most likely would have won the award in 1968. And if it wasn't given to Jerry West on the losing Lakers, Havlicek would have been named the 1969 finals MVP as well. 